Here we're going to transition into another part. In this case, I have a cylinder, and the cylinder, the circle, was defined right at the zero, zero point. So what I want to take a look at here is how to create a work plane where I don't necessarily have another plane that already exists. So in this case, maybe I need to place in some rectangular cut or something on this right side. So I'm going to issue the work plane tool. And you'll notice I don't have another plane that exists on this part. So what I can do is I can expand my origin folder and I can use those existing planes. So I'm going to select on the YZ plane and then I'm going to transition my cursor over to the right side. And I have my tangency there. So what I can do now is I can go back and make that my active sketch, draw in my rectangle and then just cut that through. Let's do a cut and let's have it go in 10 millimeters. Just like so. So let's undo that real quickly. So what I want to do next here is let's go back and place in a couple different options here for the work planes. First of all, what I'm going to do is I want to place in a work axis, just like we covered previously in this lesson. Select on the cylindrical face. I'm going to place in a work plane based on the XZ, and I'm going to select the work axis. In this case, by doing that, I can now place it in at an angle, so I could say 45 degrees. And I'm also going to create another work plane that's going to come back off of there, be parallel, and tangent to that outside face. What I want to do next is I want to place in a counter bore hole out here. So I'm going to select the sketch tool. And I'm going to project the work axes onto that front face. And for make it a little bit easier, I'm going to move my cursor over that back plane, right click and turn off its visibility. And let's place in our hole. And we're going to start by doing that by placing on a center point. And I'm going to place it right on that projected work axis. I'm going to dimension, just pressing D, and we'll make that at 35 millimeters. Select the hole tool, move the dialog box down so we can see it. Let's place in our corner bore. We spin this around and see the hole is going in the wrong direction, so we'll want to flip that. And let's make it a little bit larger. And let's have it go all the way through. Spin it around. So that's how we can create a work plane on a cylindrical face at an angle. The last portion that I want to talk about, I'm going to start up a new part file. In a later exercise, you're going to learn about creating sweeps. So I'm going to quickly do that. I'm just going to create a path. In this case, it's just going to be an arc and a line. Return. And what I want to do in this case is I'm going to create a work plane. Spin it around so we can see a little bit better. I'm going to select the edge and the end of that line. And the work plane is normal to that edge or that line and right at that point. So now I can make that the active sketch. If needed, I can project that edge onto that plane, draw my geometry, in this case just a circle, place a dimension on there if you needed to, and then we'll go back and we'll sweep that circle, 
around that path to complete the part. For this portion of the exercise, what I'd like to do is create a cylinder that is going to be offset from the existing cylinder here. In this model, I have a work axis located in the center and a work plane that is at the tangency point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an offset work plane. Create an offset work plane by selecting any plane, or in this case a work plane. I'm going to select on its edge, and I'm going to drag out. In this case, I'm just going to go negative 10. I'm going to make that my active sketch. And for visibility sake, I'm going to turn off that first work plane. And next, let's go back and project the work axes onto the offset work plane. Now in this case, I'm going to draw in a circle. I'm going to dimension that circle from the bottom edge and let's come up 30 millimeters. And let's give the circle a diameter of 15. You can see that it's disjointed at this point. And I'm going to extrude the circle using the two option. In this case, it didn't matter if I had minimum solution on or not. It's a solid body. But as you can see, the cylinder is now joined to the existing cylinder. Now, if I would go back and modify the first work plane, let's bring this up a little bit. And I can double click on that. So I can double click on the second work plane. And let's double click on the icon itself, not on the text. And let's modify that to negative 20. And do an update. And you'll see that the geometry has updated as shown.